I'm out at Invictus Games, and it's just really exciting to be at, meeting a lot of interesting people. Now I'm talking to Michael Becker. Thank you so much for your time, Michael. You're welcome, sir. Um, nice to be here. He did eight, term, eight tours over with the Danish military. You know, what is the one mission when you're overseas that really sticks out in your mind, you know, one story? Well, um, <clears throat> one thing is when you've been to Afghanistan and you've been shot at, I can relate to that, but uh, the one mission that really sticks out was a mission to Bosnia, uh, where we were on a CIMIC mission, delivering uh, wooden stuffs to uh, people who didn't really have that much to do. Um, and we are at this uh, small village, and uh, a lot of the houses actually where we come to already has uh, some kind of a, a stove or something because I can see smoke come out the chimney, you know. And but this this is a simic uh, job, and um, uh, there is a list uh, made out between the local representative and the simic people. So we will just deliver what we can and. Um, the last place we come to is a place where there's no house. There's actually just the, you know, the, the garden. And uh, in the garden there is a, a very small house for pigs. And I'm saying to myself, well, what uh, are we doing here? Nobody can live here. But actually there was an old woman living in the house or for the pigs. And uh, we were supposed to deliver that for her. And. Uh, that was really hard for me to see that an old woman like her can live in a place like that. And she, she really poured her heart out to us, you know, and, did, and offered us something to drink, you know, and everything. And I had nothing to give to her except uh, my workforce, you know, delivering this stove. And uh, if I really had any money on me that day, I would have given her everything, <laughs> you know, because she was so open-minded, open-hearted, and uh, that really that really got to me. And um, when we came back to the to the base, um, I said to the commanding officer for the CIMIC that we were it's necessary that we do something for this particular woman. And um, then I didn't hear anything from CIMIC for. Uh, maybe two or three weeks, but then the same officer came back to me and said, Michael, you have to go on a new uh, mission with us. And I was a little bit, you know, it was a little bit hard for me because I had that experience, but uh, he uh, persuaded me to go and uh, actually we were going back to this old woman. Uh, but on the, in the garden there was uh, now uh, a living uh, 20 feet container there. And uh, she, uh, Simic has actually given her this uh, container, you know, with windows, everything, and a kitchen uh, for her to live in while her house was being rebuilt. So that was really the best experience for me. It was a negative and a positive uh, with a happy ending, you know. Uh, that was, I will never forget that, and that's uh, many years ago. That's back in 95. You did 24 years service. Your son right now, he's competing in Invictus Games. Yeah. I must be making you very proud. <laughs> I am very proud about that. Uh, he's a veteran as well. Uh, he's not serving anymore because he has uh, PTSD from his tour in Afghanistan. Um, but he's, uh, he's going along very well. Uh, he got the help he needed and uh, he's actually uh, educating himself right now to be a physiotherapist. Uh, yes, I'm very proud of him uh, competing in these games. He was also competing in Orlando last year. For the Danish team, yes. One problem we're seeing over the years is that a lot of veterans, after they leave the military, when it comes to transition, mm -hmm. that there's an awful lot of problems to that. You know, with Invictus Games, and you're, you've been around it, you've, you've seen it, your, your son's been on it too now. How do you feel that that's helping when it comes to transition to back to civilian life? Well, the fact that, um, okay, it's different f from uh, veteran to veteran who is uh, um, physically uh, hurt in your mind uh, because we each tackle it different. But uh, I'm sure that the um, you know the commitment and the uh, and the bonding between the veterans you know everybody knows that it helps uh, to, to talk about it. Everybody knows that. And uh, when you're amongst other veterans, you know with uh, maybe similar problems as yourself that you have yourself um, 
I'm sure that that's uh, uh, an important way to transition from the from the military life to the civilian life, and also the physics, also the physics sports. You know, that's also um, I believe it's it helps as well uh, for your mind to transist from the on, and or to overcome uh, your your problems. I'm sure about that. The Invictus spirit. What does it say to you as a veteran? <laughs> I'm quite amazed about uh, how people here. Uh, this is my first time uh, over here in Canada, and uh, I'm sure it's, it was the same last year in uh, Orlando, and it was the same in London uh, in '15. Um, I'm really amazed at how people are, um, you know, uh, open-minded, open-hearted. You know, there's a lot of hugging going on and a lot of talking going on. You know, and I think the. Um, for all the guys who have not been in the military, you know, this is a really good way to pay back you, your respects to the veterans as well. And I think all the veterans know that. I know that. I can feel it, you know. Even though I'm speaking to you or to somebody else from a, whichever country that might be, you know, everybody has something positive to say, you know, and say thank you. And we're not used to that in Denmark uh, that much as here. It's a little bit more, you know, open hearted here. And, uh, and that's uh, quite a nice feeling. What kind of programs would you like to see started in Denmark as you're going back there from Canada that would help the, some of the veterans there that you feel may have fallen through the cracks? Well, actually, when, when I came back from my first mission back in 95, uh, we actually didn't have any programs at all. Uh, you know, we were all sitting in this uh, big auditorium. Uh, 300 men just came back from the war, you know, and uh, there was one guy asking if anybody wants to see a psychologist. Nobody raised their hands, of course, and many of those guys has fallen uh, through the through the cracks, uh, unfortunately. Uh, since then, there's been uh, a lot of uh, things going on uh, with the veterans in Denmark, and uh, there's quite some programs right now, and, so, and a lot of organizations going on that take care of the veterans, and uh, I think we're going the right way. Um, so right now, uh, I think that we have the programs we need for the moment in Denmark. I want to thank you, Michael, for your time. Well, you thank keep you it up. I will. Thank you very much. And uh, to all of you out there, have a good uh, games here in, uh, in, in Toronto, and I wish you all the best.